What's going on guys? Thanks for joining me here at Vancouver International Airport as I embark on one of the first international trips in a long time down to Nicaragua. This journey to Central America starts here at Vancouver International Airport, where I'll be taking an Air Canada Boeing 737 MAX down to Los Angeles. After a brief layover there, we're taking Avianca Business Class on a red-eye overnight flight down to San Salvador, which is going to be the focus of this video where I've got a full day long layover in the city. And after that, it's a quick onward flight to Managua, the capital of Nicaragua, where our trip begins in earnest. Here in Vancouver, the Transborder Maple Leaf Lounge is finally open, where we got to have a bite before catching our flight. This flight was pretty uneventful, although I did get a little bit of work done so that I could properly disconnect during our trip. Now that we've gotten to LAX, we have to go down this long hallway to get to Tom Bradley International Terminal. If you've ever transited at LAX, you'll know this hallway well which makes the arrival into the excellent Star Alliance Lounge Los Angeles all the more satisfying. All right, that was pretty stressful because we didn't know if we could board the flight onwards from El Salvador to Nicaragua because we had submitted our PCR test a little bit late, but it turns out we're okay. So now we're in the Star Alliance Lounge here at LAX get some food, get some drinks, and then board the flight to El Salvador for a day-long layover. Now besides this rather impressive Ferragamo amenity kit, the overnight red-eye flight, four hours to San Salvador, was really nothing to write home about. We just got off our red-eye flight. We're super tired, and uh, but we're rallying. We've got a day tour here in El Salvador, and it should be good. El Salvador, a land of danger and violence, or so you would think. I was looking forward to finding out more about life here with my own eyes. This important tool of Maya civilization is going to play an important role eventually when we go to Oh, yeah, they said it. Yeah. El Salvador yeah. suffer a lot from uh, the gang violence, but since the last, uh, you know, two years, the actual president of El Salvador has been working a lot mm -hmm. to reduce the amount of uh, violence mm -hmm. and uh, trying to create a program to prevent mm -hmm. that the young people get or being a part of uh, the gangs. Yeah, good, good. Woo! We began with a long drive through the city of San Salvador en route to one of El Salvador's most significant archaeological and historical attractions. First stop, Hoya de Seren, an ancient Mayan archaeological site. It's really cool to check out. It's actually how the Mayans used to live way back. It was discovered in 1976 after 14 layers of ash volcanic ash were uncovered on top of the site. Indeed, if you were to go to Mexico or Guatemala, then you would find Mayan ruins of how the kings and queens used to live. But here at Hoya de Seren in El Salvador, it's actually a traditional Mayan farming village that's exceedingly well preserved. You'll find traces of the nearby volcanic activity all around you, including the very 14 layers of ash that had enveloped this place all those centuries ago. 
Now speaking of volcanoes, next stop was El Boqueron National Park. El Boqueron is a massive volcano right on San Salvador's doorstep, standing as a symbol of the city just as much as it looms over it as a threat, having not erupted since 1917. Now while you're here, you can wash away those worries with some local street food and snacks. We've just finished up here outside the city at El Boqueron National Park, and now I'm super excited to be heading into the capital, San Salvador, for the rest of the day. We're gonna walk around the historical downtown, check out some cafes and restaurants. I'm excited because I'm hungry. Like most Latin American metropolises, San Salvador is split into a newer and an older part of town. Given our limited time in town, it was more interesting for us to head straight to old San Salvador. Except for getting stuck in traffic a little bit as part of the Saturday markets, so we headed the rest of the way on foot. First stop, the Metropolitan Cathedral and the National Palace, some of San Salvador's most prominent buildings. At the very impressive Metropolitan Cathedral, you'll find lots of tributes to this guy, Saint Oscar Romero, who spoke out against injustice in the lead up to the Salvadoran Civil War and is now seen as a nationwide patron saint. I should mention, by the way, that what our guide Carlos said about El Salvador's safety record improving in recent years very much held true. I didn't feel unsafe at any moment while walking around downtown San Salvador. And there really was quite a lot to see, such as El Rosario, which didn't look like much from the outside, but turned out to be one of the most beautiful churches that I ever did see. Now there was one more thing about El Salvador that I was very curious about on this visit. Oh, you guys are the first country that has Bitcoin as the official currency. Exactly. Get paid for any service or product using crypto coins. Oh, That's cool. crazy. That's very advanced. Yes, it is. It is. It's yeah. going to be good for the future of the country. Mm -hmm. Yes. And indeed, you can pay for everything with Bitcoin as well as the Chivo wallet here in El Salvador. Now, during the time of my visit in November 2021, everybody was still just about getting used to the idea of paying with Bitcoin, but it did very much seem like it was here to stay. We stopped for a coffee here at Fulano's, a very popular local Salvadoran chain in a country that takes its coffee very seriously. We're here at Cafe Fulano for a much needed shot of caffeine in the middle of a super long layover here in San Salvador. And the last stop on our trip was something we absolutely couldn't miss. Obviously, we can't leave without trying the national dish, pupusas. Here we've got cheese, beans, and pork rinds, shrimp, chorizo, and chicken. Let's dig in. All sorts of fillings in a delicious flatbread. Buen provecho. That wraps up our long layover here in San Salvador. It's been a super long day, but super rewarding to actually get to spend a full day in this Central American country. It was awesome to learn a little bit more about the country and try out some of the favorite foods they have here, like the pupusas, which were totally delicious. And it's really set the tone for the rest of the trip, which we'll be spending over in Nicaragua. So now we're gonna go catch our flight over to Managua, the capital of Nicaragua. And I'll see you soon over there in the next video.
Thank you.